If you are a mobile app developer, a tester, or a startup owner, you would probably like to know areas in which your apps are more prone to bugs. Wouldn't that be great to take this guesswork out of your testing process and know exactly where to look to detect bugs? Hi, I am Katya, a senior QI engineer at QVAT, a software testing agency based in Ukraine. I know firsthand how important it is for businesses to ensure that their apps are flawless before they hit the market. Today, I'll share with you 10 important test cases to test your app thoroughly, to find critical bugs, and better understand your app's quality overall. Let's go! Before we go over each test case example, let's first define how mobile app testing differs from testing web apps. So, mobile apps are created to be used on small devices such as smartphones and tablets rather than desktop or laptop computers. They can be installed from a distribution platform, App Store, Google Play, Microsoft Store. Unlike web apps, they can fully or partially work without the internet, but cannot be accessed via a browser. Now that we know all of that, we can move on and go over each test case example. I use them on a day-to-day -day basis, and they help me to uncover both critical issues and minor defects. Point 1. App installation, launching and removing. What is the first user's interaction with the app? Obviously, before users can benefit from the app, they firstly need to install it. And if there are issues in the installation process and subsequent launch, this first impression will be ruined forever. That's why it's very important to prepare test cases to check the installation process and subsequent launch, to make sure there are no crashes or any other weird behavior. It's equally important to check that your app can be uninstalled without any trouble. Users should always have this opportunity. Who knows, maybe later they will change their mind and will go back to your app. Point 2. Push notifications. Next on our list are push notifications. They help companies to keep users engaged and as a result open for buying more products or services. At the same time, push notifications are only effective if they work correctly. If they are delayed or sent too frequently, this can easily annoy your users. So, test cases to make sure that your push notifications render correctly and appear at right intervals are an absolute must. Have you ever, as a user, had issues with notifications? What was the experience like? Please let me know in the comments. Point 3. Work under various device settings. Other test cases that you can't afford to ignore are those based on device settings. First of all, you need to know what devices are prevalent among your users and then create test cases based on their device settings. For example, will the UI still be readable if the user selects the dark theme, or will the text just blend with the background? We all like customizing things to our preferences. That's why it's so important to prepare test cases that go beyond the default device settings. Point 4. Influence on other apps. Another thing to consider when testing your mobile app is its effect on the other apps. It's crucial to check that your app doesn't stop the rest of the apps on the device from functioning. That can actually happen. Point 5. Interruption testing. The way your app behaves in an ideal environment is one thing, and how it runs in real life is a different story. What is that, you may ask? Well, in real life, many things are happening simultaneously on our app. For example, you can receive a phone call, SMS, or another app push notification exactly the same time you are using this app. What another example? You may set a time a long time ago, and it goes off the time you have just opened your app. Or you can um, just plug in or out your device out of charging, depending on your battery situation. All these interruption cases are important to check to make sure that your app operates stable no matter what. Point 6. Resource consumption. Next on our list is resource consumption. 
Users have got new WebS apps on their device and you definitely don't want to be that one that drains all its battery power. Users can check it in the device's settings and geek the culprit out. The same goes for memory consumption. App itself and its cache shouldn't be too heavy, as memory is limited on a device. Needless to say that apps are more likely to crash when the available storage is running thin on the device's memory. Point 7. Usability testing. Don't forget about the usability testing. All screens should remain functional and visually appealing, regardless of the mode used landscape or portrait. And if the app is meant to be used only in one mode, don't forget to disable the other one, it is much more better than it will break apart when opened. Definitely check how the app responds to common screen actions, like tap, swipe, scroll, zoom in, zoom out. Also check that your on-screen keyboard appears immediately a user attempts to end the attack. Point 8. Offline functionality. As I mentioned earlier, the biggest difference between a mobile and a web app is that the first one can work without the internet, at least partially. So, testing how your app behaves when the internet connection goes down is really essential. Will your app inform the user that the internet connection has disappeared or it will just show an internal loader or a blank screen? Will your app will be able to reconnect automatically when the internet is back? These are only some possible issues that you can discover testing your mobile app without the internet. Point 9. Hardware access. Many mobile app features rely on the access to the device's hardware. For example, you can't use a video recording app without granting in access to the device's camera. My task as a tester is to ensure that the app can actually access this hardware via the camera, microphone, light sensors, etc. It's also important to check what happens if a user denies this access. Will a user see a nice pop-up informing that it is mandatory for the app's functioning or the app will just crash or freeze? Point 10. Subscriptions and purchases. Last, but definitely not least, is subscriptions and purchases. That's a place where app creators are getting rewarded for all of their hard work, but are they really? What if premium content is available for free? Or auto renewals don't work correctly? Or simply, if user can't pay for the subscription option for some technical reasons? That's why all auto renewals in app purchases, subscriptions, should be tested thoroughly in all available countries. That's a wrap for today. I hope you find this test case examples useful and will integrate them into your daily testing routine. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and like for more content like this. One more thing is, if you are a business owner or a product manager and you don't have enough resources or expertise to handle the QA process in-house, consider turning to help to a professional QA agency. We at QAVET will be happy to ship better user experience and gain the recognition your app deserves. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. See you soon.